Last week, I mentioned we would have more football talk here on the podcast now that the basketball season is over. And today is a day where we get back to what Buckeye fans love as we have the first player during spring practice to lose his black stripe. You might not be surprised who it is when you hear the name and five ways Ohio State's basketball team can improve in the offseason. All that and more right here on Locked on Buckeye. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, March 29th in the year 2022, and I would like to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. Buckeye fans love football. Jay loves football, and we're going to talk more football over the next coming weeks leading up to the spring game, and also the NFL draft. With the spring practice going on and players getting acclimated and getting their feet wet and as things ramp up and heat up during spring practice, you're going to hear more about players that are losing their black stripes. Yes, you are a Buckeye. Yes, you can wear your practice jersey. Yes, you can even possibly dress on game day. But that does not mean you're officially a Buckeye until you lose your black stripe. It's a tradition that Urban Meyer started Ryan Day continued it, and it's a phenomenal way to get players up to speed with what it means to be an Ohio State football player. The first player to lose his black stripe this year, Tanner McAllister, the Oklahoma State transfer less than three months, or just about three months after he transferred to Ohio State, he has lost his black stripe, and now he is officially a Buckeye. Last year at, o at Oklahoma State, Tanner McAllister had 42 tackles, one tackle for loss, one interception, and six pass breakups. But I think the best thing about Tanner McAllister is not so much the stats that he had last year, but it's the leadership quality. As Ohio State's learning a new defense, they have a new defensive coordinator, they have new coaches, they have new voices, they have a new philosophy, they have new terminology, Tanner McAllister can help everybody out there learn all about Jim Knowles, learn all about who Jim Knowles is, and they can help. He can help even the guys that aren't on the field this year, but will be there next year. He can even help them get to know the gentleman that will coach them next year and the year after that, and hopefully longer than three years. Tanner McAllister is a phenomenal young man. He has made some waves and got some attention uh, for his workouts and the way that he has uh, done during the offseason strength and conditioning program. Tanner McAllister talked about a few things. Um, about some things that, he, that happened to him when he got to Ohio State. And he also talked about some things that uh, – how he can help guys when it comes to Jim Knowles. Here's what he had to say, Tanner McAllister, back in, I believe, February, about what it was like getting to Ohio State and working out with his new teammates. Quote, when I first got here, I'm working out with the guys, and all our relationships, we instantly clicked. Just because we know we all have one goal, win a national championship try to play in the NFL, things like that. So they were kind of like, hey, what's Coach, what's Coach Knowles like? What's his defense like? And I was like, I can show you. I can explain it, end quote. And that's a phenomenal way. Not just hearing it from me and what my thoughts are, but exactly what this young man is thinking. He knows he is in a position not only to come in and start, not only to be on one of the best teams in college football, not only a chance to win a national championship, but he can also be a leader and a teacher at the same time because you know how it is. You have a new teacher. You're going from, let's, let's say, even new school. Talking to someone about this recently. When I went from fifth grade to sixth grade, there was a change. There was a learning curve. Not only having multiple classes, multiple teachers, the school is bigger, more students that were there in the school, uh, having to go from one place to the next. It was a change. It was a learning, a, a way for me to learn more about myself but it would have been nice if I had somebody, like, guiding me that was around my age saying, hey, y'all, uh, hey, Jay, go here, go here, don't go here at this time, go here at this time, things like that. That would have been amazing. 
But these players have that very thing with them right now. It's a luxury to have a player that used to coach under your former defensive court or your new defensive coordinator last year who played under him last year, who knows the defense, and it can help you out that way. Think about this. Last year, Ohio State was thinking about getting Henry Toto, the Tennessee linebacker that's now at Alabama. Well, if he would have come here to Ohio State, it would have been a whole new system. He wouldn't have known the guys. Now, granted, it would have been a phenomenal get to, guy to get on the roster, but he would have been able to impact the roster and the team the way that Mr. McAllister can. Here's some more things that Mr. McAllister said about Jim Knowles, the coach that he has had while at Ohio State while at Oklahoma State, that I'll have right now at Ohio State. Quote, he's that guy that can talk to the players, not only about scheme. Excuse me, this was this is uh, this is Jim Knowles speaking. Excuse me, this is Jim Knowles talking about Tanner McAllister. I knew that didn't sound right when I started to read it. Quote, he's that guy that could talk to the players, not only about scheme, but he could talk about me too. Day one, if I go from being Mr. Calm to running around and screaming, he can say, hey, that's just Knowles. Chill out. He's fine. That's just the way he is. Don't take it personal. He just wants you to get better. To have a guy their own age that knows me as a person, he's going to be able to tell the guys a lot about me, not just as a teacher and scheme, and he can teach the scheme, but he can tell them about me and how I operate and who I am, In quote. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal get for Ohio State. A guy who's going to be in the starting line up for Ohio State. Um, you may know it as a cover safety last year. You were a guy that follows Ohio State, but more NFL terminology, the nickel corner. That's going to be Tanner McAllister's role. You might hear bandage or boundary corner or boundary safety. That's the same type of thing and what McAllister is going to be. Great get for Ohio State. I love that he followed his coach from Oklahoma State, Stillwater, Oklahoma, to Ohio State in Columbus, Ohio, because I believe that's a great fit for McAllister. It's a great fit for Jim Knowles. It's great for Ohio State to have Tanner McAllister in Columbus and that Mr. McAllister has officially become a Buckeye by losing his black stripe. The final four is this weekend. Kansas, North Carolina, Duke, Villanova. Some say these are four blue bloods in college basketball. Some of you might not realize that Villanova won a – national championship in 1985 and I say some of you because I even forgot that Villanova was that good um back in the day or not back in the day to some of this back in the day uh, I was born in the 80s I, what I normally say back in the day 70s 60s 50s to me that's more so back in the day but when it comes to this basketball team that's not playing right now and what the guys that are playing right now what they possess what they have all of these coaches Jake Wright Hubert Davis, who was coming in in year one, Coach K and Bill Self, they all have to evaluate, make improvements in the offseason, improvements with the basketball team, and improvements with themselves as well. Ohio State desperately needs to make a lot of changes. I got five for you. And I think when you hear what we got here, they'll make a lot of sense. And they're realistic things that Ohio State can do between now and the start of the up coming season. Number one, the first thing that Ohio State could do is snag top talent or elite talent out of the transfer portal. I remember last year in the offseason, I said, why don't Chris Holtman go out there and try and get Walker Kessler? Now, I know in my mind that's going to be a hard get for Ohio State. Walker Kessler is not is a guy that is going to go to a top-tier team. A team is probably going to be a number one or number two seed in the NCAA tournament. A team that has a track record of getting talent to the NBA, and that's really going to be a great fit for him. I did not think Walker Kessler was going to go to Ohio State. However, that does not mean Chris Holtman cannot try to get Mr. Walker Kessler. If I say Tanner McAllister throughout this segment, I apologize. Um, his name is still in my head, football, football nerd, football headed that I am. And so I'm trying to get away from that first segment and still transfer to Walker Kessler. But I said, go out and get Walker Kessler, phenomenal young man, seven footer, uh, what, 240, um, ended up transferring to Auburn. Auburn, phenomenal. They were two seed in the NCAA tournament. They did not make it to the Final Four, but they did go further. They went further than Ohio State, which was expected. Nobody really thought Ohio State was going anywhere in this tournament. And that's exactly what happened. But I said, go out there and get Walker Kessler. Go out there and try. Go out there and just snag him. Get him so nobody else could even think about getting him. 
do the unthinkable. Make changes that you would not think in your wildest dream to make. Why? Because you need to keep your job, number one. But number two, you need to, you need to get better. You need to improve instantly. I don't think you can concretely build. I don't think it's wise to build your team every single offseason through the portal. I do think it's wise when you need guys and there are top elite talent. There's top elite talent in that portal. Go get it. Snag it. With Ohio State losing what they're losing, Liddell's already gone. I believe there's seven players between senior, between graduates and Liddell going to the NBA that Ohio State will be losing. Malachi Branham could be one more player that's up out of town. We don't know what is going to happen with him. Go snag elite talent. Because I don't think you want to have a year next year where Ohio State, one, does not win the Big Ten regular season or Big Ten, or win the Big Ten conference tournament. They also don't lose, also don't win 20 games. And they also don't get out of the first weekend. That's not a good formula for Chris Holtman. That's actually a formula to get fired if you're Chris Holtman. Go snag elite talent. This will help you keep your job, number one, Chris Holtman. But number two, also, this will help you be a really, really good and a better basketball team than you were this year. Number two, speed up the pace of play. I mean, there are rules set in place that will help you do that very thing. And you know what I do think Chris Holtman needs to do? Get out of this, let's pass the ball to the post every time down the court. I'm not against post play. I'm actually for post play. I'm for these things that are sometimes old school philosophies, playing through Zed Key or playing through Kyle Young or playing through Liddell in the post. There is a time and a place for that. However, one of the downfalls of that is you pass the ball inside and everybody stands around and watches. Everybody. My dad was talking about that the other day. I forget what we were watching or talking about. But he talked about it. Yeah, one of the problems with throwing the ball into the post every single time down the court is you watch. You stare. You watch the man with the ball and the other four guys just watch and stare and see what he is going to do. It's just what happens. And you know what? One thing I think that hurts Ohio State numerous times in numerous games is their pace of play. Now, it's not just the passing the ball inside consistently that Ohio State does, but also another thing Ohio State does consistently is wait until the clock is under 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds to get a shot up. It's not wise. What do you see when you watch these teams that are playing right now deep into the tournament? Now, Villanova's different, but a lot of these teams, their pace of play is faster than Ohio State's. Yes. It may work in Big Ten play. We're not trying to only win Big Ten games. The goal should always be win a national championship. Make moves to make sure your team is going to win a national championship. Granted, Ohio State is not a basketball school. So now winning a national championship, you can win your you can keep your job and never win a national championship. You, that's that, that can happen. However, anytime you're on the court, you should be planning to win. Anytime you're on the court, you should expect your game plan, the game plan that you have put together to be a game plan that you can win, that can help you win. One way to do that, to improve in the offseason, so that next year there could be more wins than 20, there could be 25, 26, 27, maybe even 30 wins, speed up the pace of play. Think about the type of game, basketball most of these guys play in high school, then they come here to Ohio State. Now, granted, they, they, they commit to Ohio State. But the pace of play might not fit the players that are on your roster like you think it does. Pick up the pace of play. Snag top talent out of the portal. Work on your strength and conditioning. Now, this one gives me a little sense of deja vu. Every time I watch these guys play basketball, I am sitting here wondering to myself, what is going on? When I say deja vu, let's go back to the football season. How many injuries did you see that you didn't really think were the, oh, he broke his leg. Not that's gruesome. Don't get me wrong. That right there is gruesome. But those are things that you kind of can't expect. You can't predict those things. Even in your strength and conditioning. Sometimes, sometimes freak accidents just happen. But with the injuries that Ohio, injuries that Ohio State had this year and that why and when I look at teams like Duke and uh, North Carolina and Villanova and Kansas and other teams that are still that went deep into the tournament, a lot of their players look, and I'm going to use a word that you may not that you may think I'm crazy. 
they look healthier than Ohio State's basketball players. It's kind of the same way in football. Alabama, Georgia, sometimes Clemson, a lot of these guys, a lot of teams out there, their players are healthier than Ohio State's football players. Now, I'm not saying these guys aren't healthy, but I mean, like, strength-wise, conditioning-wise, how you look as a basketball player, are you thin? Are you able to get up and down the court over a five-minute span with, without <sighs> huffing and puffing? I mean, these are legit things when you're watching the basketball. You're like, there's a difference between the other guys and our guys. Now, the other guys might still be better, but why the naked eye? Just using your eye while, while watching the game and while watching warm-ups, you're saying there's a difference between us and them. You know how it is. You go to you go to a game with someone that's not really into that sport. They're just a casual um, observer, or they're just there to spend the day with you, girlfriend, boyfriend, date type thing. And you're going out there saying, "Hold on, that team looks better." And you're the person that's always watching the games, knowing what's going on with every single team and player. You're like, "That team's actually not." I mean, that no, like I know how they look. You might you might say, "Well, they look better," and you're like, "That team's not good." Then all of a sudden, you're like, wait, my analysis of what I felt was going to happen is completely different. This person who's a novice doesn't know really anything by just a quick glance saying they look better. And it's not just what they do on the court. Physically, they look healthier. Strength and conditioning is a problem at Ohio State. Well, it was for the football team. I think it's a problem for the basketball team. Maybe not as drastic for football, but this team should not have as many injuries as it's had this past season. Some of them were unfortunate, honestly. Some of them were unfortunate, like Kyle Young's concussions. Like, he's had a history of those. So, like, that's something that just might happen. But some things were not unfortunate. Well, all injuries are unfortunate, but some things could be prevented. Work on strength and conditioning. A lot of this will also go, and I'll talk more about this down the road, but I do more player profiles. But Zed Key has to get in better shape. We'll talk about that more down the road. Three down, two more to go. Ohio State's basketball team needs to improve. We have some more ways about how they can improve coming up next. Ohio State's basketball coach, Chris Holman, has been under the microscope for a while. He's a good basketball coach. He's not horrible. He's won 20 games at Ohio State every time, every year he's been the head coach. But one thing you look at Chris Holman and you say, what's missing? Is it his philosophy? Is it what he does uh, in preparation for games? What is going on with him? And when I look at Chris Holman and think about the time he's been at Ohio State, five years at Ohio State in Columbus as a head coach, coming from Butler and then coming from, I believe, Bowling Green before that, had success throughout his career, numerous 21 seasons, a phenomenal coach, phenomenal basketball uh, mind. But every now and then in a coach's tenure, you kind of got to get some consulting from someone that's been around a while. Spinner on the block that knows a thing or two about your profession and what you're trying to accomplish. And you know what? I think it's time for Chris Holtman. I don't know if he's done this normally. I have no idea. But seek. Talk to some people that have been around a while. Talk to some people that are seasoned coaches to see how you can improve. Because I think that's one phenomenal way for Chris Holtman and his basketball team to get better. Yeah, I've talked about snagging top talent out of the portal, speeding up the pace of play, work on strength and conditioning. Yeah, the strength, strength and conditioning might primarily be, well, probably will be, the strength and conditioning coach or coordinator. But that does not mean Chris Holtman can't have his hands right there in that jar, right there in what's going on there to assist and make sure things are happening in a good, clean, crisp way. Talk to a seasoned coach to get some help so your team can get the can be the best you can be. Because the last thing I would ask, I would want anyone to do that has the resources Chris Holman has or has the resources you and I have on a regular basis via the World Wide Web is to have the ability to get to talk to somebody about anything. May it be coaching your profession, may it be family matters, may it be your own mental health, is to have the ability to do that and not do it. I mentioned mental health because I'm still going to talk more about that down the road with Harry Miller, what he has gone through, the way he got to help. I do think personally, you cannot disregard the ability and the access we have for mental health, for our profession, for family matters, for anything in life. We can get help with the world wide web. A lot of us, we have it in our pocket. 
don't cell phones. We don't tap into it to help get us help in certain areas. Chris Holtman talked to somebody this season, been around a while. There are numerous coaches that would be willing to help you out and give you some help and some advice to help you be a better basketball coach because nobody wants Chris Holtman to lose his job. Well, I don't want anybody, anybody to get fired. Some of y'all might want Holtman to be gone, but I think Chris Holtman can be a coach that can adjust his philosophy, adjust what he has done to make Ohio State a better basketball team next year. Last but not least, defense, defense, defense. As somebody, when I play pickup basketball, which has been Quite a long time. But when I play pickup basketball, I pride myself because I'm not that good of a basketball player at three-point shooting and defense. Not in that order. Primarily defense first and then the three-point shooting. That's just me. But when I play defense, I know that I'm not going to be a guy that if we're going first to 11, win by two, I'm not going to be a guy that's going to go out there and say, okay, cool, I'm going to score six of the 11 points. Over half of the points are going to come from me because I am just that guy. That ain't me. That is not me at all. Now, there have been games that I've scored that I've hit three threes, and that's which is six points, uh, or th three two-pointers, and you know what I'm saying, three two-pointers, which is six points, and I, I've had that. Now, I don't go into that thinking I'm going to be a scorer. It just happens. I'm on my game. That's how the game is flowing, and I, I get open, rise up, fire, bang. It happens every now and then. It just happens. I can't deny it. But one thing I always pride myself on, and my buddy Allen used to play ball with him all the time, I like guarding Allen. Allen was a point guard. Uh, he liked to facilitate. Had some decent handles, um, a little bit better handles than your average um, guy playing pickup basketball. Got a little fancy every now and then. I called him white chocolate, just joking around. But Allen made me work. Allen made me adjust my game. Allen made me use my brain on the court to get better. And Allen made me get better at defense. But you know what? There were times that I needed to play good defense to win games. Not, 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 no. Better defense than normal two win games. Where I had to lock in on him so he could not get loose, so he could not get the ball to the to to his teammate, or maybe rise up and bust my eye hitting a three in my face. I had to raise my level of defense. Now, as we watch St. Peter's and as watched past tense St. Peter's and other teams in the tournament, what's one thing you notice? Their defensive intensity, their defensive level, and their defensive philosophy and mindset is different than Ohio State's. One. They have players that can play better defense than the guys on Ohio State. Number two, they're guys that are on the court. They're all in sync. One band, one sound, A and T. I just watched Drumline, so that's where that line came from. Um, yeah, a little movie reference there for you. If you don't, if you haven't watched Drumline, I encourage you to go watch it. But one band, one sound, they're one unit, one mission. Don't let them score the basketball. That's it. But in that, you may play a 2-3 zone. You may play a 2-3 going to a 3-2 zone. Uh, you may play a matchup zone. You may, may have three-court quarter press, uh, three-fourths quarter pr uh, court press. You might have a full court press. Um, you might be catching your guy and guard and uh, uh, meeting it at the, at the half-court line. Whatever it is, change your defensive philosophy. Now, this is something we'll go more in depth on that I think Chris Holtman can do in the offseason to get the guys better. But those are five ways Ohio State basketball can improve. Snag top talent out of the portal. Speed up your pace of play. Work on your strength and conditioning. Chris Holtman seeking help from seasoned coaches. And then defense wins championships. Raise your level of defense on the court night in and night out. That is all for the day. That was a lot. That was fun. Come back tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, for more from the Locked on Buckeyes podcast. Talk more football. Talk more basketball. We're going to introduce Mock Draft Monday as well, a little bit football talk on a Monday. We're also going to sprinkle in a little Mock Draft Monday when it comes to the basketball as well because now, now that Liddell is gone, we can look at some things via Mock Drafts about where he'll go, but also speculations about another Buckeye, Malachi Branham, who might be going into the, to the NBA draft. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen a few Mock Drafts. I won't tell you who consistently is above the other. You got to come back later to find that out. Thank you once again for making Locked On Buckeyes your first to listen every day. Now make your second listen of the day, the Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL defensive back Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life on Monday. They had Mock Draft Monday. They have, it every, they have it every Monday. Go check that out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your fine podcast, the Locked On Buckeyes podcast, and the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. 
both podcasts and every podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. They are all free and available wherever you get your fine podcast.